welcome to India Business Insights, your go-to channel for deep dives into the success stories of India's biggest and most interesting companies. Today, we are talking about DMART, the leader in retail and India's favorite one-stop shop for all your household essentials. From groceries to electronics and daily necessities, DMART delivers quality at prices that keep customers coming back for more. But what's the real story behind this retail giant's phenomenal rise? In today's video, we will uncover DMART's journey to success, the strategies that drive their operational excellence, and how they have built a loyal customer base that sets them apart in the industry. So let's dive right in. The Indian retail market is among the top five retail markets in the world and is estimated at US dollar 950 billion in 2023. It remains one of the world's fastest growing markets and is poised to become the third largest market by 2030. The growth of India's retail sector is propelled by several factors, including increasing urbanization, rising income levels, the expanding female workforce, and an aspirational young population. This growth extends across various town classes, benefiting numerous local, regional, and international brands and manufacturers. They are being connected with consumers across diverse markets, thereby actively participating in India's ongoing growth narrative. Grocery, fashion, and lifestyle and consumer electronics constitutes over 90% of the market. Let's take a deep dive into its past and track the story of a benevolent founder who carefully studied the business, trusted and nurtured a young management team, invested capital wisely and patiently, and finally shared the wealth he created with his employees. In December 2023, DMART was at a crossroads. The company could be justifiably proud of its strong profitability record in the highly competitive offline retail industry environment, where even large players with extensive networks of stores had minuscule, sometimes even negative, profit margins. By October 2021, the company sported a market capitalization of over 3 trillion Indian rupees. Its founder, Radha Kisan Damani, was ranked 91st in the Bloomberg Billionaires Index globally and 9th in India with an estimated wealth of 18.1 billion USD. Navel Nonhona, its chief executive officer, was India's richest professional manager with a net worth estimated to be 936 million USD. DMART's current market cap is a bit lower today at Rs 2.7 trillion or USD 32 billion. DMART was founded way back in 2002 by stockbroker and entrepreneur and now billionaire Radha Kisan Damani. By the late 1990s, founder Mr. Radha Kisan Damani was already established as one of the more successful and well known value investors in the Indian equity markets. Through his investing style, he had developed a very keen understanding of the Indian consumer sector and its psyche. He was anxious to start a business beyond investing, which would enable him to test his hypothesis about the Indian consumer. Damani at the time was a successful investor in consumer stocks, Chilet and VSD Industries are two through which he made a small fortune. The money did extensive reading and research on successful retails all over the world. He earned his purse over the next decade, during which he ran two franchises for Apna Bazaar. He would spend time in the 700 square feet Nerul store and observe which items moved how customers behave and what level of discomfort they would put up with unlike other retailers, he eschewed air conditioning. But Damani had less flexibility than he would have liked as 60% of the assortment was dictated by Apna Bazaar. While those familiar with Damani were surprised at his choice of profession, Retail was looked down upon in the South Mumbai social circuit he was a part of. They were also impressed by his dedication. In 2000, the Mani incorporated Avenue Supermarts and started a three-store operation named D-Mart. Two years later in Pawai and soon after in Kandivali and Malad. 
unlike its more ambitious counterparts like Big Bazaar and Reliance Retail, DMART didn't start off with the dream of becoming a large supermarket chain. The first DMART store was built in Pawai, Mumbai, in a fairly small property. But a few things were clear to Damani from the very beginning. He wanted to replicate Walmart's high volume, low margin model. He wanted to understand the basic items in a traditional household shopping cart and provide the best value for those items. He wanted to run a company with positive unit economics. The first thing Norhona, managing director and CEO realized was that price was the primary differentiator in India, particularly for groceries and fast-moving consumer categories like toiletries and personal care. The whole operation had to be geared towards offering an everyday low price. But since margins in this business are wafer thin, inventory turns are the key. DMART's strategy was in contrast to future groups which relied more on royalty-driven membership strategy where frequent shoppers are offered deals not available to others. DMART had no loyalty program. To get the best prices for groceries, DMART followed a simple strategy. It paid suppliers faster than others on an average 8 days as against 60 days by its rivals in exchange for an upfront discount which is then passed on to the customer. Other savings were extracted through operational efficiencies. For instance, in 2006, when DMART was just a seven-store operation, it implemented its first enterprise resource planning ERP platform. By 2011, DMART set up a distribution center. Unlike competition, it hadn't spread itself thin across India. Instead, it had cluttered its store across Maharashtra and Gujarat. Investments in an ERP platform and distribution center allowed the company to have a far more efficient supply chain than competition, who did the same only when they achieved scale. But DMART didn't just crack any random market, it dominates the food and grocery market that's notoriously difficult to crack thanks to its super low margins. So how did DMART do it? And how does it compare to its biggest rival, Reliance Retail? Well, let's find out. Here's what DMART's business model looks like. Number one, owning store space. The first major thing that differentiates DMART from its competitor is its strategy of not renting but directly owning its store space. While Big Bazaar and Reliance built small stores averaging at a couple of thousand square feet max, DMART stores are huge property spaces that span from 10,000 square feet to the latest 94,000 square feet averaging at around 40,000 square feet per store. Another differentiator is locality of these stores. While you will find big bazaar and reliance retail stores in malls and shopping complexes and in residential areas, DMART stores are usually at number one, in crowded, densely populated localities, DMART builds stores where they will witness heavy footfall. Number two, in scarcely populated localities. DMART buys cheap land on outskirt of a city to build huge retail store space so they can provide a large variety of product mix. In all cases, DMART stores are always standalone, one flow structures. The idea behind this strategy is to essentially have the freedom to create large warehouse like stores so they can manage supply chain and inventory efficiently. And to save money on rent, for a normal retail store, the rent expense comes up to 5-7% to of their revenue, while for DMART, this is a one-time capital investment, which has also continued to appreciate. Number 2. Cluster Expansion Model Another huge differentiator between DMART and its counterparts is its expansion model. Reliance is not able to squeeze in as much profit margin as DMART does, nor can it handle huge footfall in a single store. So the only way for them to increase their volumes is through rapid store expansion. Reliance Retail, for instance, has 18,836 operational stores. Compare that to DMART's 365 stores all over India. So while other brands quickly set up stores in all parts of the country, DMART is in about half the bigger states of the country and even in these states in a very few locations. Now the reason behind DMART's slow expansion is its cluster expansion model. 
like Walmart, Dmart only expands its store in clusters, meaning it first establishes a distribution center in a new locality and then builds stores around it. This helps them efficiently manage their supply chain and inventory. Number three, low pricing. The third USP of Dmart is its super low prices. This is a result of several different initiatives. Let's explore them one by one. Slotting fees. Given the high footfalls of Dmart stores, brands pay them a fee to have their products on their shelf in order to increase their sales. This fee is called a slotting fee. Slotting fee becomes a part of Dmart's revenue and in turn helps them offer higher discounts than usual. Low cost price. Dmart has to stock up quite frequently given their high turnover. On top of that, the brands is famous for paying vendors and manufacturers much more quickly than any other retailer. The usual industry norm is expecting payments in 30-40 days, but Dmart pays within 7 days. One of the major pain points of vendors is lack of constant cash flow. So because of Dmart's quick credit cycle, they are offered much lower prices than others on the already wholesale rates. Low expenses. One thing Dmart is absolutely not known for is its ambience and convenience. Any Dmart store looks like a shabby warehouse with thousands of people crashing their carts into each other. But due to their low prices, people keep coming back. Huge product mix. Now you might have noticed that Dmart stores not only carry food and grocery items, but they also carry a bunch of different products like apparel, footwear, bed sheets, lamps, bags, jewelry, etc. Large sale volume. Finally, instead of providing a range of products, Dmart focuses on understanding the top selling products in a locality and mainly stocks those products. It saves a ton of money on inventory through this and its sale numbers stay high. All in all, these five specific initiatives produce up to 24 to 30% lower prices. However, ownership gave Dmart the latitude to get space at an attractive price at a new urban cluster and allows for greater flexibility in store layout and the percentage mix of various products. But as it grew, sticking to the ownership model could have lowered down expansion. This is why it also started taking stores on long leases. As modern retail drives deeper into India, Dmart finds itself well positioned to capture a large slice of the pie. The company has sent a long time perfecting its model, one store expanded into 10 and Dmart was already challenging then leader Big Bazaar's 250 stores business. Soon enough, it gathered more market share to become India's second largest grocer. The first 10 years saw Dmart scale up to 55 stores. It has since ramped up to 385 stores across 10 states. As modern retail in India accounts for just 9% of the total retail industry, so there is immense scope to grow. The company came out with an IPO size of Indian rupees 1,870 crores in 2017. Today, Dmart's market cap at peak was Indian rupees 34,700 crores, and even today, it is at rupees 2,79,000 crores. During the IPO roadshow, while investors were excited with how Dmart had kept costs low, they were concerned about the potential threat from online retail. Groceries occupy a large volume compared to other online purchase items but are priced low and have lesser margins. Hedging its bets, Dmart started experimenting with a hybrid model, Dmart Ready. These are small shops, no more than 200 square feet. Customers who have placed their orders online, they receive the same discount as those who buy in-store. Come and collect their items. While Dmart had seemingly cracked the code in the offline retail business, its online grocery retail arm, Dmart Ready, continues to lose money in its seventh year of operation. Online grocery retailing is expected to enjoy robust future growth since more and more Indian consumers were shopping online. This was especially concerning because 65% of the Indian population was under the age of 35 years. 
If DMART does not operate profitably in this space, it might hurt its future competitiveness as well as performance. So cracking this online shopping model remains a top priority and is perhaps the key to its continued success and growth. This could be perhaps the reason for the relatively weakness in its share prices where the market cap today is significantly low than its peak. Its current share price today at Rs. 4200 is about 20% lower than its peak share price of about Rs. 5300 in October 2021. This has happened even though the turnover and the profits have continued to rise in this period. Before we look at the financials, let us have a quick look at the product categories the company sell. The key product categories can be classified into three segments. Foods, non-foods, FMCG, general merchandise and apparel. Food category comprises of groceries, staples, processed foods, dairy, frozen products, beverages and fruits and vegetables contributed to 57% of revenue in FY24, while FMCG having home care products, personal care products, toiletries and other over-the-counter products contributed to 21% of revenue in FY24. The remaining 23% of revenue came from general merchandise and apparel. And the feeling of an afternoon shopping trip, DMART has become the go-to shopping stop for many households in South and Northeast India. It is the second largest grocer with annual revenue of Indian rupees 49,533 crores in FY24 and the most profitable retailer in India with a profit margin of 7.38% and a net profit of Indian rupees 4,099 crores. It also helped the DMART spend the better part of the last decade perfecting its business model. Unlike its rivals, who for the most part focused on achieving scale, DMART worked on keeping costs to a minimum and getting the per unit economics right. Food, grocery and FMCG products account for DMART's more than 50% of sales. In order to make more money, they need to sell other products. That's why the huge warehouse like store works in favor of DMART. Even if you grab a pair of shoes and a couple of bed sheets on your way out, DMART will make better margins than usual. While Reliance is about five times larger, with more than four times larger store area, DMART's profit margin was 2.7 times Reliance, and their profit per square feet is 2x that of Reliance. So even though Reliance leads in revenue and market share, it is overall less efficient and profitable than DMART. Comparing inventory turnover ratios. A good indicator of efficiency is their relative inventory turnover ratios. The inventory turnover ratio basically tells you how many times a company sells their inventory in a year. Reliance Retail has an inventory turnover ratio of 9.92, meaning they sell their inventory approximately 9.92 times a year or roughly every 37 days. DMART has a higher inventory turnover ratio of 14.61, selling their inventory 14.61 times per year or about every 25 days. What does this tell us? DMART is more efficient at managing its inventory compared to Reliance Retail. It takes DMART only 25 days to sell a batch of inventory while it takes Reliance Retail 37 days. Higher turnover means lower costs. DMART's faster turnover reduces storage costs, minimizes the risk of inventory obsolescence and allows them to respond quicker to market challenges. This contributes to better cash flow and potential higher profitability. Reliance Retail's slower turnover suggests they may have more stock sitting on shelves which ties up capital and could lead to higher holding costs or missed opportunities to replenish with fresh, in-depth products. Overall, DMART's inventory management is more streamlined, allowing them to rotate stock faster, which can result in more sales and better operational performance. For Reliance Retail, there might be room for improvement in managing their stock and optimizing sales cycles. Financial Performance Consolidated 
demand has seen its turnover and profits grow consistently except a slight decline during covid affected fi21 in fact it remained profitable and suffered only a marginal decline shows its great resilience it has continued to grow at a rapid pace since then and the profits have continuously kept pace as of 31st march 2024 Dmart had 62 distribution and 10 packaging centers the total number of bill cuts was 30.3 crore in fy 2023-24 as compared to 25.8 crore during fy 2022-23 annualized revenue from sales per retail business area square feet was 32941 in fy 2023-24 and 31096 in fy 2022-23 During the year under review the company expanded operations by adding 41 new stores the company has presence across 10 states one union territory and ncr with a total of 365 stores as of 31st march 2024 while the growth of dmart has been somewhat slow this has been in part due to its cluster approach now the company will be expanding both in and around the existing clusters as well as in new clusters Further, in a recent All India survey that we did, we noticed something very interesting. Many small retailers buy the products from DMART and selling in their retail stores. While we have not heard that the company consciously aims to be a distributor or wholesaler of groceries and FMCG products, it is interesting that it is emerging as the most significant distributor for many companies. Many experts predict that Dmart could soon expand to 1500 stores all over India. Now, Reliance Industries and its super deep pockets have the potential to undertake such wide expansions. It even bought Big Bazaar's parent company, increasing its total market share now to 50% plus. But Dmart has to sustain itself with its earnings. So like before, it's safe to assume they would be expanding slowly with care. always keeping their profitability as the first priority further with many of stores are now leased through long term leases this would keep the capital costs significantly low from efficient inventory management to delivering value to millions of customers dmart continues to lead the way in india's retail space we still however will have to wait for a few more years to see if it has an efficient online strategy and how well does it perform as online becomes more and more important if you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about what makes dmart so successful don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into the world of retail giants thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one